the word you will hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a chance the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire and with that faith it is impossible to please god because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek it hallelujah he that comes to god must believe that he exists the reward of christianity hallelujah he says without faith it is impossible to please god without what it is impossible to let me say that your greatest possession as a christian is your faith in god your greatest possession your greatest asset is your faith in god as a christian hallelujah no christian should value the things of this world above the things of the lord once you stand before god as a christian it is your faith that gives you spiritual identity he said what is not born of faith is sin it means it is faith that gives spiritual identity whatever is not born of faith is not recognized in heaven at all no matter how the earth celebrates it be with me here child of god whatever is not born of faith is not what whatever is not born of faith is not recognized in heaven because it is faith that gives you spiritual identity That's what he said. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. He didn't say without prayer. He didn't say without offering. He said without faith. It is impossible to please God. So that's why he said, whatever is not born of faith is not recognized in heaven because it is faith that gives you spiritual identity. Tell somebody whatever is not born of faith is not recognized in heaven. Many of us are trying to get the attention of God. But without faith, whatever you do does not attract the attention of God. So, we notice that there is a lot of struggling, but yet there is no result from the hardship. I want to show you something today. If you study Genesis chapter 22, he said, And God said to Abraham, He said, Arise, take your son, your only son, Isaac. Now that is strange because by this time, Abraham had how many sons? Two, Ishmael and. Now show me Genesis 22, verse 1. Why does God say your only son? How does that make sense? Sometime after God tested Abraham, he said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, Move ahead. Then God said, take your son your only son stop there isaac now but is there no ishmael why does god say your only son because isaac is the son that was born of the faith of abraham in god romans chapter 4 verse 18 to 21 tells us that before isaac was born abraham believed god but Ishmael was born of the flesh. He was not born of faith. So there are certain things you possess that God does not know about. You can say, oh, I have land. God say, I have not seen a land. No. Because he's not born of faith. Never be quick to envy people that possess the things of this world. Because God may not know it. Anybody listen to me? 
are you following me at all take your only son Isaac and offer him to me our question is why does he say your only son tell somebody you need faith without faith it is impossible impossible to please God impossible to please God hmm. so what is not born of faith cannot be recognized whatever you possess that is not born of your faith in God is not acknowledged in heaven even if it's marital even if it's a child if it, anything you have in your life that you do not believe God for God does not know it because for you to believe God for something God must have promised it so whatever God has not promised is not for you your possession in Christ is discovered by the promises of God to you what has not been promised does not belong to you God may promise me a plane he promises you a bus if you have a plane God does not know it because that is not his promise for your life so whatever you possess that was not born out of your faith in the promise of God cannot be acknowledged by heaven I have this I have this I have this one question I want to ask you sometimes we say I've been believing God for something I've not had it let me tell you something it is very okay that you believe God before you got married yes it means the marriage came from God this thing I wasn't even thinking it just came to me be afraid of things that just came without thinking every time God gives you a promise it is an expression of your possession in Christ the promises of God are the revelations of our possessions in Christ what has not been promised has not been released follow me my people so every time God gives you what a promise it is what an expression or a revelation of your inheritance in Christ it is okay to believe God for good health because he promised that you, you, will heal, you will heal you it is good to believe God for, for prosperity he promised to prosper you now everything God has promised is a revelation of what he has prepared for you so if you don't know what he has promised you don't know what belongs to you that is why you must meditate on the scripture we keep praying oh Lord give me God does not act like that he told Abraham he said look the lamb which you see I've given you it means it is only what you reveal that is released what do you know about God what has God promised you now when it begins to say without faith none can please God we should understand what is faith what is faith faith is your response to the promises of God faith is whatever you do because of what God has said am I talking here what is faith your response to the promise of God or to the instruction of God faith is whatever you do because of what God has said when God speaks whatever you do because of what he has said is what is called faith glory be to God so scripture says now faith is not just in the mind you do something in the woman with the issue of blood Jesus told her your faith has healed you she confessed and she went and touched him in Luke 5 17 he said when, when the people did not have a place to enter they brought a man to the roof he said when Jesus saw their faith not when he saw their face not when he saw the man's pain God does not respond to pain he responds to faith he's a principle you enter your house you want to put the light on you don't cry you touch the switch it's the same thing in the kingdom of God the principle that provokes the response of heaven to the cries of men is called faith if you are crying let it be a cry of faith if you are praying let it be a prayer of faith if you are giving let it be a giving for faith whatever you do that is not with faith no matter the pain you are going through heaven does not recognize 
So the principle that provokes the intervention of heaven in the affairs of men is called faith. Not even prayer. Faith. Because if it is prayer, why do so many people pray and God does not act? Why? Because if the prayer is not born of faith, God does not be here. And what is the faith prayer that is born of faith? It is the prayer you pray because of something God said. When I'm praying, Oh Lord, provide my house rent. I shall not lack. Why is it faith? Because scripture says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not so what is the prayer of faith the prayer of faith is the prayer provoked by your knowledge of god's promise the prayer of faith is when i am asking god to give me what he promised to me in the scripture or by the spirit that's what they call prayer of faith prayer of faith is not some people say man of god pray me strong prayer which one is strong prayer are you talking strong in terms of how the man of god will shout or the grammatical style or what are we what do you mean by strong prayer or the man of god should pray and sweat yes yes no man of god sweat man of god pray i tell you he pray strong prayer <laughs> because he sweat he pray strong prayer if you study first Kings chapter 18 you will see a, a, a an encounter between elijah and the prophets of Baal. he said when the time came they said come at the evening sacrifice notice elijah said the god that answered by fire is god so the prophets of Baal he said they brought their sacrifice and they began to pray he said they shouted all day and they began to cut themselves they prayed from 6 in the morning to 3 o'clock nothing came down he said when Elijah came Eli he said Elijah came by the evening sacrifice that is 5 o'clock Elijah came at 5 o'clock and he said one thing he said oh Lord that these people may know that I am doing this by your instruction that is faith I'm doing this because you told me certain people have done things and they have died cheaply because God did not send them so until there for your house before you go cut that tree better ask God yes I've told you wisdom is not fear there are times to run they told Joseph take the child and run God let you beat Herod but run now We'll fight tomorrow. Amen. So, if you notice the fight between Elijah and the prophets of Baal, it was an issue of faith. That's why he says the prayer of faith. Elijah prayed again. Faith is a response to what God has said. Many of us, our worship is not worship born of faith. We just sing because the song is making our body feel good. Listen to me. The worship that provokes. The attention of the father is the worship provoked by your knowledge of God. When you sit down and you read, the Lord is good and his mercy and just forever, you say, wow, Lord, you are good. That is the kind of worship that makes God see you. Not the worship that gratifies our body. The worship that is provoked. Anytime you meditate on scripture and you respond to the knowledge you have received, it is called faith for faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word Romans 10 17 faith comes by and hearing of what the word when you listen to the words of men it brings fear when you listen to the word of God it brings what faith hallelujah so it is time for us to start praying the prayer of faith the prayer of faith is not based on our, on our feelings it's based on the scripture listen to me it's not based on how you feel it's based on what God has said it's not based on our feeling it's not based on what we see it's based on what God has said that's what they call the prayer of faith let me tell you something my people the reason why so many prayers are said today and few are answered is because few prayers are born of faith some prayers are born of feeling some ones are born of fear some ones are born of ambition when God speaks he performs I tell you the truth God does not say rain will fall then you know, if God says rain will fall rain will fall that's why even some prophecies do not come to pass because these are not prophecies spoken by faith 
has spoken by emotion. We cannot come and say, there shall be no war, there shall be war. No. When we hear God and we come and speak, then it is established. But if we come and say because we feel, then God does not know what we said. Glory be to God. Okay, show me James 5, 16. Hear what it says there. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Verse 14. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church and to pray over him and anoint him with all in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Verse 15. Listen now. And the prayer offered in faith. Give me New King James. He says, and the prayer of faith. Okay. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Notice. He didn't say, and the no oil will heal him. He said, pray, anoint him in the name of the Lord. But it's not the oil that will heal him. It's the faith. That is why so many people are using the oil. Nothing is working. Because they are deceived to think that it is the oil that is working. Oil does not work. It is faith. It is faith that provokes the intervention of heaven in the affairs of the earth. So you are shocked. Somebody come and testify. The, the man of God bless all. After service, everybody go and buy oil. He become rubbing oil for you. Something that raised somebody from the dead when you rub it, your face only shine. Nothing changed. Because you have not understood that the reason why it happened for that person is not found in the oil. It's found in your heart. The power is not in the oil. The power is in your heart. The faith in the heart of a believer is what releases the power of God into manifestation. Why? Some days there may be no oil. There may be no water. There may be no sticker. But as long as there is faith, there will always be God. Because the manifestation of God depends on the faith of men. Where there is no faith, there is no divine manifestation. Faith permits God to show forth. And fear permits Satan to show forth. Glory be to God. So, it's time for us to grow and understand that you, all of you here, there's something in you. According to your mindset, the power is in my hand. As I was just taught you, you'll be here. Mm -mm. The power is in my hand. But until the faith in your heart comes out, you just be empty hand on empty head. He says, when the woman said to herself, if I touch him, I will be healed. He said, when she touched him, power came out and she was healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? For Jesus felt in himself the power had gone. And Peter said, the people are dragging you. Jesus said, yes. They have been touching me since power has not gone out. So the only touch that Jesus recognized was the touch born of faith. He said, when the woman heard about Jesus, she said, I will touch him. She heard first knowledge, action, faith. So the only thing, so you stand on prayer line and I'm laying hands on people. That the only person to whom power we go is the one that has faith. You're just standing there. Oh God, pray, 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 pray. They tell me, so you get power. As you touch me, so I go heal. It doesn't work. Glory be to God. It's like Naaman. Naaman had leprosy. He came to Elisha. Elisha said, go to river Jordan and dip yourself seven times. Naaman, yeah, Naaman. Naaman said, I thought. Somebody said, thinking. Naaman said, I thought that when I will come. He will wave his hands and call on the name of his God and I shall be healed. Let me show you where it is wrong. Naaman was raised in a country who does not serve God. So they were worshipping idols. And, and, and Satan operates by magic. But God is a miracle worker. Miracle and magic. Difference. In magic, you don't have a responsibility. Because magic is for the purpose of entertainment. But in miracle, you have a responsibility. Because miracle is for the purpose of drawing you closer to God. So, when Naaman came, Elisha said, Go and dip yourself seven times in River Jordan. It's not because there is any healing power in River Jordan. But dipping yourself... Is, a, is faith responding to what the prophet has said is faith so Naaman was not healed by the water he was healed by his obedience to the instruction which is faith now do you think you can just go to the Vajora now and watch there you'll be healed the power is not in the water 
even if the power is in the water it's your feet so no man expected to be healed without believing let us say no in the kingdom of God you must participate in a miracle oh glory be to God glory be to God you must participate for example when Moses entered Egypt he did miracles every day fell on only by me they go water turned to blood stick became serpent okay the stick became a serpent and then what nothing changed but when the time came God said now command the people the other nine miracles you did it by yourself but now command the people to kill animals use their own hand and put blood on the door that is the time they left Egypt it means until they participated in the miracle they could not be delivered if you just expect to come to church I will give you water I will give you oil I give you my handkerchief no it is time to command you to pray to command you to fast to command you to be holy so that when the miracle operates you are not a spectator you are a partaker somebody follow me here so in the kingdom of God we don't operate magic we operate miracles we work miracles and their principles you must believe Isaiah 53 verse 1 who was believed the report of God and to whom has the arm of the Lord be revealed arm of the Lord speak of power the arm of the Lord is revealed to those that believe the report of the Lord friend there are so many reports here which report do you believe always have a choice so <laughs> the greatest gift that God gave man one of the greatest gifts is a gift of choice that he does not force you he allow you choose if you do not believe the report of the Lord the arm of the Lord cannot be revealed to you in other words the arm of the Lord is revealed to those that believe the report of the Lord so no matter how you cry I am suffering no 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 it is time to believe and how shall they believe if they refuse to hear sit down if they refuse to listen to Bible if they refuse to come to church how shall they believe those who reject the word of God will embrace the words of men tell somebody those who reject the word of God we embrace the words of men what does it mean to believe to believe simple means to accept that God has done what he says he has done and to expect that God will do what he says he will do two things if God says he has healed me past tense I accept if God says he will prosper me I expect so to believe has what accepting and expecting when you come and i say in this month nobody in your family will die expect life that month if they call you that somebody is sick in the village tell them the man of god said nobody will die you are expecting god to perform what he promised through my mouth you cannot allow fear take over your heart when there's a prophecy on your head the man of God has said it. Don't be afraid. God has spoken. Somebody listen to me at all. So what does it mean to believe? To accept that God has done what he says he has done. And to expect that God will do what he says he will do. No matter what I see, I accept what God has said. That's why I told you, you must understand in which covenant you are in. In the time of Moses, they call it the old covenant. Covenant means agreement. The agreement between God and Moses was established by the blood of lamb. And in that time, God was operating by sight. But in our time, the agreement between us and God was established by the blood of Jesus. But in our time, God operates by faith. So in the time of Moses, it was normal to see fire. God, you see, God was Exodus 13 21. He said, God was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud of glory by day. God came down as fire in our time. 
he doesn't come down like that he may come down like that but it's a sign so I do not expect God to be coming as a fire no when I pray I don't have to see the fire because I believe because we are in the time of faith as I pray I know by faith that it has happened spiritually tell somebody to believe means to accept that God has done what he says he has done and to expect that God will do what he says he will do tell somebody else to believe means to accept that God has done what he says he has done and to expect that God will do what he says he will do oh blessed be God the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off whose expectation who are the righteous those who believe so it means the expectation of those who believe you don't want to say man of God I believe I will marry this year question is who told you we married this year your belief is based on your feeling the one is saying I'm going to marry it may work it may not work but if God promised you by prophecy or you had a dream you are right to believe it are you following me here now I'm moving ahead can I move ahead he said for without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that God exists the word God there means that Jehovah. I've taught you that the name of God is who? It's Jehovah. And Jehovah means the one whose existence depends on himself. Every name has a meaning. The name of God is not God. God is a title like president or king. King is not the name. It's a title. But his name is what? Now, finally, the Bible says those who come to God must believe that He exists. Even some people don't believe that He exists. Some people come to God because it's Sunday service. For them, church is nothing where people just gather with a tissue. You don't have to, don't lie to your neighbor, don't steal your neighbor's rice, be a very good child. That is all for them. They don't feel like praying. So, as they leave church, it's over. They leave the way they like Sunday, they come to church. Why? Because for them, there's nothing like God. He said, you must believe that God exists. If the devil can make you doubt the existence of God, he will hinder your experience of God. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, some trials come to us and you ask yourself, God really did? That question is the reason why you have not yet been delivered from that problem. Because when you begin to doubt his existence, you no longer experience his presence even though he's present if God they want another marriage instead by saying that you are delaying your marriage Satan uses trials to make us doubt God how can God be alive and these things happen no so say, how can God be alive people are dying in Utopia people I say, don't, never talk like that complaining is the language of the world thanksgiving is the language of Christians we don't complain it's pagans who complain, not us. He must believe that God, that God exists. Always have this consciousness that He exists. <laughs> Let me do something. Okay, write this up. Unbelief cannot nullify the existence of God, it can only nullify your experience of God. Are you me, my people? Even if you believe that God does not exist, He will not make you not to exist. He will make you not to experience Him, although He exists. Have you not seen people who say God does not exist? I don't see them plenty. You he say, "Man, I'm gonna lead that team for church. God not exist." So I ask them, "Does Satan exist?" Then they say, "Yes." As I don't understand. Okay, now who creates Satan? Does it mean Satan is a supreme force? No. If you listen, can I tell you something here? <laughs> if you can deny the presence of good, you cannot deny the presence of evil. I, am I talking to somebody here? He must believe that God exists, Yena, and that He is a rewarder. This 
you want to focus on? Somebody say reward her. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In Isaiah 45 verse 19, God said, I did not ask you to seek me in vain. Child of God, there is a reward for being a Christian. There is a reward for trusting in God. There is a reward for seeking the Lord. Prayers are not offered in vain. Worship is not done in vain. What we do for God is a privilege for us because what we do for Him does not change Him. If somebody's name means Jehovah, the one whose existence depends on Himself, it means whether you pray or not, He exists. But me, my existence depends on God. If God vexes, I'm out of this earth. No, no, no. Two of us. He kicked out Satan from heaven. One, he said, get out. And the man left. Satan is moving around because God has permitted him. Satan knows God. Satan is a very obedient devil. He's showing power only to us. When God comes, so he's becoming very obedient, sir. <laughs> God told him, he said, don't touch Job. Did Satan kill him? Is that not obedience? Come on, clap for him. He's a obedient devil. Yes. This means that his obedience is what we are preserved. <laughs> you don't understand me. Clap for obedience. Obedience. Clap. At least we've seen one thing. Obedience. <laughs> if the devil can obey God, why can man not obey God? It means in the whole creation, only man does not want to obey. God said, let birds stay in the sky. Birds are still there. Let fish stay in water. Fish in the day. Adam, where are you? He's the only one that left. <laughs> the rest today, they are still there. <laughs> what is wrong? God told Satan, don't touch. Satan did not touch. Even Satan obey God. He knows that God, Jehovah, Jehovah Alakai. You want to see fire? I don't try. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a reward for seeking the Lord. Most times, I want to teach this message because I want to open your mind. There are certain things that happen to us that make us believe that our service to God is in vain. Sometimes, if you are honest, most of us have asked ourselves, what is the profit in all this thing I've done? True of us. <laughs> yeah, I want to answer you today by the Spirit of God. Amen. What is the profit? What have I gained? If you study Malachi chapter 3, he said some people were angry. They said, God, why are we being holy? He said, people insult you and they go free. Why are we holy? They were angry with God. Unto God had to come down. And God said, you have spoken harsh words against me. God. God began to defend himself before human beings because they were angry with God. They said, let us see Malachi 3. You have said harsh things against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? Now God will talk. Verse 14. You have said it is futile in vain to serve God. What do we gain by carrying out his requirement and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? Move ahead. But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evil doers prosper. And even those who challenge God escape. They put a verse, they say, God did it and will reverse. <laughs> yeah, then those who fear the Lord talk with each other, and the Lord listened and heard a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who fear the Lord and honor his name. Go ahead, verse 17. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty. In the time when I make up my treasured possession, I will spare them just as in compassion a man spares his own son who serves him. Look here. So these people said, What is the reward of being holy? What is the reward of righteousness? God said, wait, there is a reward. Tell somebody there is a reward. But the issue is this. It is wrong expectation that brings disappointment. It is time to know in your spirit today that the reward of Christianity is not earthly. It is heavenly. This is the first thing. The expectation of an earthly reward 
is the reason why so many have been discouraged in the Lord. Because she thought that because she's serving God, God will give her a husband. He may give you, he may not give you. This is the part that we don't like to hear. But it's better we say the truth. It's only the truth that makes free. Are you with me, people of God? So many people, they are crying today because of expectation. I said, the expectation of early reward is the reason why many have been discouraged in the Lord. They expected something that God did not give them. And trust me, it was an earthly thing. I expected that as I'm serving God, God will give me a job. They have not had a job. Next thing, discouragement. Satan begins to ask you, you are wasting your time. Why are you wasting your time? Uh -huh. And if your service to God depended on what God can give to you, you will not stand trials and temptation. Because when there is lack, you will not serve. When there is abundance, he has done for me. When there is nothing, you start vex. No stability because their heart is not for God, but for what God can give them. Please, child of God, I say this to you by the Spirit of the Lord. The reward of Christianity is what? Heavenly. It's not earthly. There may be earthly reward, but that's not the focus. It's heavenly. John 14. Jesus said from verse 1 to 6. He said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Where? Notice, in my father's. So, the place that God has prepared for us is in the presence of the father. It's not an earthly place. I'll tell you what God gives for things on earth. Remember, I told you that Satan is very obedient. Amen. And the obedience of Satan is a sign of the majesty of God. If human beings disobey God, it's because they don't know him. Satan obeys him because he knows who is God. He has been with God in heaven. Am I speaking to somebody here? I go to prepare a place for you. Then he says, if I go to prepare a place, I will come back and take you that you may be where I am. It means Christianity is the preparation for life after it. I will come and take you not into marriage. To be where I am. I expect marriage, yes, because God promised it. But those are not... Listen, God gives marriage to everyone. Can I tell you the truth? God gives children to everyone. That will say he make it his reign to fall upon the good and the bad. Say some man gave beginning because yeah, gift and children from who? Not Satan. Whether it's a prostitute is God because he's good even to unbelievers and wicked men. But so when we speak of Christianity, our reward, God cannot reward us with the thing that unbelievers have and even have in abundance more than us. You come on earth, richest people, unbelievers, where they are rich in the eyes of men, not in the eyes of God. Because for us, we're in Christ. Our faith is our riches. Glory be to God. Am I talking to somebody here? Christianity is a preparation. We are here to be prepared. He said, I have prepared a place. I have prepared things. Now I want to prepare you. Because in the prepared place, they are prepared things, but only for prepared men. Whatever. What you will experience after earth depends on what you do on earth whether you be in heaven or you be in hell or in the lake of fire it depends on what you do on earth tell somebody the reward is heavenly one more time again I have prepared a place for you you see you here there's a place for you You live on earth how many years? High is 70, 90, you are gone. But in the presence of the Father, eternity. In a prepared place. 
no pain, no sorrow, no curses. Whatever we go through on earth, let us understand it is what we go through on the earth that gives us a better reward after earth. So go through it. Show me Hebrews 11 verse 16. Instead, they were longing for a better country, for a what? A heavenly a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Oh, they were longing for a city, a heavenly one. The place prepared for us, which is in the presence of the Father. It is the ignorance of the true rewards of Christianity that has provoked carnality among Christians. When Christians go so much after the things of the world, it's a reflection of their ignorance of the reward of being a Christian. Some are offended. I don't think can't trust sins. Wait, I don't get them. Oh, no, no, no. As a Christian, you are empowered to give and not to get. See yourself like that. Whatever you get is a privilege. Your duty is to give. Give love. Give your time. Give your effort. Give because there is a reward it has come to the time that Christians cannot even give unless they are promised a blessing so it's now as you give 10,000 you have 100,000 all these kind of things because we don't know wrong expectation but go give the money not to no come yes because God did not promise to give you anything be careful not to expect what God has not promised that an anointed man lies does not make it the truth. It makes it an anointed lie. <laughs> Glory be to God. Somebody say it's not in vain. The first thing which is not in vain in Christ is your labor. Your labor is not. It's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear, stand firm let nothing move you always give yourself fully to the work of the lord because you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain hallelujah listen to what he says he says stand firm let nothing move you for they that trust in the lord shall be like mount zion that cannot be moved he said let nothing tell somebody let nothing move you one more time again he said let nothing move you stand firm knowing that your labor he said give yourself fully to the work of the Lord knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain hmm. friends let nothing move you that you have been laboring for God and you have not seen anything let it not move you He's saying there he said don't allow what you have not yet received become a hindrance for you continuing your service to God let nothing move you let nothing notice the word let let me do not permit he said in the world you will have trouble let not your heart be trouble so no matter the trouble in the world don't let it enter your heart when we speak of your labor we speak of your 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 prayer your fasting sometimes you ask yourself what is the benefit of this i'm doing he says it's not in vain but if you read the whole of that first corinthians 15 apostle paul was talking about the resurrection of the dead he was saying that when we shall rise in christ there shall be a great reward for those that labored on earth for christ our labor on earth shall be rewarded in heaven it, listen to me well though. it may not be rewarded on earth don't mind it cannot even if God gives you a husband it's not a reward that is a dash what is a husband or a child compared to eternal life anything that God gives us on earth is not a reward in fact it's just something that God gives us to help us serve him you know what God will give you a husband because you need a husband to serve him better 
so he gives you a husband when god sees that your motive for asking anything from him is to enhance your service he gives you easily but when you demand for selfish reason james said he said you ask and do not receive for you ask with selfish reason lord give me my husband let my enemies know what is the meaning of let my enemies know breakthrough that we close the mouth of my neighbor see i'm here a christian's prayer breakthrough that we close the mouth of them <laughs> and they're praying give me the breakthrough give me the breakthrough Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. After the breakthrough, breakthrough, headache, Efiraga, Efiraga, Efiraga. Somebody, somebody, your labor is not in vain. Many people have labored and they saw nothing. What about the people that brought the gospel to Africa? What did they gain? Some came and died of malaria. Does it mean they labored in vain? This is the reason why most of us cannot labor because some Christianity today we before we do something we want to know our benefit let us go for evangelism uh, what do I gain you don't know you don't know that in heaven God will call our people and shall give them crowns according to that labor on earth do you think you'll be in the same quarter with Apostle Paul you you know you can't trust every day self man will die for church you know you'll be in the in the fiambo of heaven <laughs> Or, or the buy cocaine of heaven. Why some will be in the, in the, in the Dubai of heaven? <laughs> Hallelujah. What about men, missionaries that have gone to villages to preach the gospel? What about those that have given all they had for the gospel and they had nothing in return? On earth, it seemed as though they had nothing. But their labor for God is the reason why souls have been saved. The Lord cannot forget such people. For the people that think that life ends on earth, their labor must have profit on earth. They begin to choose church according to what they gain. That prophet is see at the God of church. Then I now Pastor Kevin, don't be prophet. No, I go me. I want a prophet. I want you a prophet. If you see crusade, Pastor, nah. I'm not crusade prophet. I go the one. Because as you hear prophet, he go see you, he go see vision. As I'm preaching now, some people they need to enter. Not that I must have seen a bishop. <laughs> no worry, I will see a bishop for you. So that. The bishop they say, and I say, if you don't repent, you go go hell. Let me bishop. I don't, I don't see bishop. Say amen to the bishop. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. There are three dimensions in your level. Number one, your level of faith. Say the level of faith. Your level of faith. Is, called, is your obedience to God even when your obedience can be sacrificial the labor of faith is obedience to God even when the obedience is sacrificial that's why called the labor of faith once you have once your faith do you know some people lost their marriage because of Christianity that's a labor of faith that's what they have been called to suffer because of the, the faith the labor of faith people lose their job because of church or Christianity, am I talking to somebody here? That's the labor of what faith. First Corinthians 15 17 says so. He said, Christ did not arise, then your faith is in vain. But because Christ arose, your faith is not in vain. Somebody may say, But what do I gain after it? There's much to be gained. Light does not end here. Hallelujah. Somebody say the labor of faith. One more time, the labor of faith. One more time, the labor of faith. What is the labor of faith? It's obedience to God that is sacrificial. When your obedience to God costs you something, it's sacrificial. The labor of faith. So, that's a different dimension of faith. That is when you do not compromise your standard of the word for the standard of the world. It's the labor of faith. You don't compromise. I have seen people who died believing God for what God said. And they died though. It's like that faith, faith. That faith did not fail. Lord, you promised to hear me. I saw a woman that was sick. And she confessed it until she died. I felt bad. 
It's not that I'm beginning to understand that it was not in vain. Better die believing than live unbelieving. It's better. All right? Number two, your labor of love. Your labor of what? Luke 14. Let's say Luke 14, 13 to 14. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Verse 14 here. And you will be blessed. Hear the blessing. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Stop. When shall you be repaid? Anybody know what here? He didn't say you will be repaid. If only me, oh. He says, spend your money. Go to prison. Go to hospital. Help orphans. Help needy. They will not be repaid here. Ah. But no one here, they can't preach, you know. As you bring your seed, harvest will come, the rain will come. As you give ten thousand, you have one thousand. But me, you send my money there. No, but me borrow me money, borrow me money, borrow me. I don't see no can borrow me money. There are some messages you hear, you borrow money and so. See, Jesus, take it there. I know that in one week I will have. Stop, stop doing. Money, God is not a money doubler. So when I give to the poor, the true giving is the one prompted by the spirit of love. The spirit of love gives without expecting a return. As I give, God will give. Even if God does not give, I give because it's a responsibility. As a Christian, you have a responsibility to give, to help the needy. It is a sin for a Christian to close his eyes to a person in need. It is a sin for us. Unbelievers can do that, not us, because we are the ones through whom God, in whom God lives. So God expects to show himself as a helper through us. Christians do not close their eyes when people are in need. The labor of what? Love. Look at Christ. That's the labor of love. He came and died for us. Now, there's a love now. You go and marry. That's not a labor of love. Oh my God, for me to marry this girl and this own my father and mother, it's not a labor of love. <laughs> so don't misunderstand me. The fact that might be, um, you know, as a girl, you disobey everyone to marry that boy, it's not a labor of love. The labor of love is selfless. It's not selfish. It's selfless. It's not selfish. The level of love is what you do is when you act, when is when you show, when you give help to others without expecting anything in return. What is that? The level of love. I'm not expecting. Okay, I'm coming here. I'm praying for you. I don't expect that I shall pray for you. Come and give me money. I don't expect it. If you give fine, you don't give. I'm not bad because I wasn't expecting money from you. That's a labor of love. When we go out for evangelism, we don't expect anything. We do it as a responsibility. Grow to understand that there are certain things you do in Christ because you are a Christian. As a Christian, you are called to labor in love because Christ labored in love for us to be here. That is why if you give a three days fasting for people to fast and pray for themselves, they fast. Let us say three days fasting and prayer for our family members to be safe. Not everybody will fast. They say, what do I gain there? If all you do, you see yourself inside. You are not yet a Christian. Bible says, if you see your neighbor hungry and you tell him God bless you, how does the love of God dwell in you? That's the Bible talk. When somebody is hungry, he needs food, not blessing. The labor of love. He said, give to the poor and your reward shall be where? Now, I bet you have never read that in your Bible. Give, it shall be given to you, but where? <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell somebody I will labor in love. It's very important to labor in love. You know, there are three kinds of hand. There is the hand of faith. The hand of faith received from God. Hmm? There is the hand of love. The hand of love gives. 
and there is a hand of unbelief the hand of unbelief with holes among these three hands the greatest is the hand of love he said among all the greatest is love because love Paul said if I give my gift my riches to the poor and have no love it profits me nothing it means it is love that gives value to your gift what you don't love has no value before God or before men the value of a gift is the love the giver has for it the reason why Jesus is valuable is because of the love God has for him God did not send anyone to die for us he sent the one he loved that is why he said this is my son whom I love in other, in other words Ed, I'll give you the best I have that's a labor of love that I'm moving back home I have 500 francs I see my neighbor when in church he's shrinking I say please take this one the taxi I am not thinking that what will I eat when I go back I know because I'm laboring in love the Lord is my provider glory be to God the third one is the labor in holiness labor in what you can see it in 1st John 3 verse 1 to 3 he said that he is a Christ is coming again he that has this hope in himself purifies himself to be pure just as he is pure the labor of holiness is when we consecrate ourselves to God entirely when we submit ourselves to the desires of the spirit not the desires of the flesh many people have compromised their stand with God for the pursuit of worldly pleasures because they will ask themselves man of God I've not slept with a man for 15 years yet God has not given me a husband that is not why you were holy for you are not holy because you want a husband you are holy because holiness pleases God if your husband come fine but the lack of a husband should not make you break your vow towards the Lord hallelujah come say the, the labor of holiness consecrating yourself to God separating yourself from the world dedicating yourself to the Lord hmm. what is not tested is not approved what is not approved cannot be recommended God permits hmm. <laughs> your labor shall be tested first timothy 3 12 second timothy 3 12 he said whoever wants to live godly shall be persecuted shall be what shall be tried every temptation is permitted by god why because every temptation is an opportunity to demonstrate your love for god and your fear for god by your faithfulness to him what is a temptation when satan gives you opportunity to disobey god that's what i call temptation it oh how good would it even been for us not to be tempted but we'll be tempted after jesus was baptized and anointed the next day he was tempted it will be you will be tempted sometimes the response of god to us depends on our response to him in times of trial many of us went through delay we began complaining and god said this one does not love me because if you love me and and you ask me for school fees i don't give you you will not stop talking to me because i did not give you school fees do you know that people don't hurt some people whom you are helping they ask you money you don't give them they're angry with you as if they gave you the money to give them no such people stop helping them christianity is not foolishness no don't help them again why because your help is in vain in their life there's no need they already know so don't help them somebody has been helping you every day the day doesn't help you you're angry do you have a right to be angry oh no god see my uncle since you go to america never call me must he call you no, i see you collect your money and send him there <laughs> oh, oh may the lord bless you amen so you'll not be angry with someone because they didn't give you what you asked for it's not normal you're not talking with your sister because 
man of God, my sister has money. But our firstborn is our firstborn. Blood is blood to blood, sister. She's not helping us at all. Man of God, I'm suspecting that, that her husband, that her husband has charmed her. See you. Man of God, before our brother married, our brother love also nyafu nyafu love. He was buying this for me. And my but since he married that girl, no more love. When your husband buy you give his love, when your brother buy give for his wife, his charm. See your life. to live godly shall be persecuted as gold is refined by fire the character of a Christian is refined by trials God permits trials to come so that our character can be refined and strengthened so God permits them James 1 12 to 14 he said blessed is the man that endures temptation for after it Yes, shall receive the crown of life. The same James 1, I think verse 4. He said, count it all joy when you go through various trials. For the testing of your faith produces perseverance and character which does not fail. I don't want to be persecuted. Me too. But we shall be persecuted. This is, the, is, it, is it Mark chapter 10? <laughs> Where he said, verse 30. He said, he that has left shall receive wonderful plus persecution. <laughs> we we'll never quote that part. <laughs> to the cross. That is so what to that singing. Oh, blessed be God. Let us see John 16 verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In the world you will have trouble. Listen, but take heart, oh boy, I have overcome the world. Show me John 15, verse 17 to 19. This is my command, love each other. Verse 18, hear now. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Oh, If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. It's the, this is why they will persecute you. You want to be holy? Satan will persecute you. Your friends will persecute you. They will lie against you. They will accuse you. And you will ask, you will pray, Oh God, vindicate me. It's like God will be quiet. But the silence of God is not the absence of God. Some Christians, can I shock you? You know how many years Joseph Meek in prison? 11 years oh you know Joseph had a dream at 17 and became governor at 30 he served in the house of Potiphar for 2 years 18, 19 and the wife framed him he was in prison from when he was 19 to when he was 29 11 years and even on to this day God did not vindicate him no one knows at the end if he tried we know it because we read the Bible you don't understand me well a righteous man that has done nothing was persecuted because he was holy if he had accepted and compromised to have an affair with Potiphar's wife Satan would have left him yes yes the choice of God is the target of Satan certain things we go through is the devil trying to make us uncomfortable in the flesh so we can deny or compromise our stand with the spirit why are things so hard for me be careful Satan wants you to reject your confession of God if you are the son of God turn these stones into bread look at all these kingdoms Jesus if you worship me I will give you if you worship me if you worship me <laughs> you cannot worship him unless you have denied God Worship of Satan is an unconscious denial of Jesus. To worship him means to obey him. The world hate me, so I hate you. Why is it? 
blessed be God. We are blessed. Say we are blessed. Be strong. Listen to me. No matter what you are going through, what do I say? Be strong. Be strong. Every satanic attack is a spiritual pressure for you to bow before Satan and deny God. I will explain to you. Every what? Every satanic attack is a spiritual pressure for you to bow before Satan and deny God. Daniel chapter 3. He said, the king put fire. He said, when you hear the sound of the flute, everybody will bow and worship the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, king, we will not bow. To bow means to compromise your stand for God for the pursuit of worldly gain. A sister can say, I will, I will remain holy for God, I will be a virgin, I will be this. When pressures come, the reason of that pressure is for you to compromise. Once a woman wants to start following God, is when you will have the highest financial problem. And in that problem, Satan will bring friends that will tell you, just not just one time, just how you be fine, that's how you suffer. Why? Satan brought that poverty so that he can give you pressure for you to say, I'm going to find some money if you take care. So that your, your vow of being holy, of being a chaste virgin to the Lord, can be broken by pressure. There are brothers that vow to stand for God, but when pressure comes, they find themselves doing all jobs to survive because they are falling in pressure. They put Joseph under pressure, fornicate by fire. And they showed him two ways enter prison or fornicate pressure sometimes standing for god can make you lose so many things on the earth god said to elijah he said i reserve seven thousand that have not bowed their knee to bow they have not bowed they have not compromised no matter the pressure child of god understand that the pressure of poverty the pressure of sickness the pressure of failure is an attempt by satan to push you to compromise your stand with god satan is not after your exam mm -mm. he wants you to fail so that you can be discouraged and stop following god any two ways satan do he will attack now your faith remember your faith is your greatest possession in christ once you have a fail exam i say master this is not what you say you know what it means to be expecting a child for a long time they keep prophesying. I'm seeing with the child. Begin a camp. Satan is using it to discourage you. Be careful. When you are too focused on the things of this world, you will easily get discouraged in your work with the Lord. Because sometimes, some things are delayed by purpose. Don't believe the wrong things. You can empty your account and give money to church and God give you nothing back. Begin to know like that. Once we begin to preach lies to people and people don't see anything, they begin to fight us and fight God. Better know the truth. Hallelujah. Matthew 5. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Is it earth or kingdom of heaven? Earth or kingdom of heaven. not blessed are those who are persecuted those who are persecuted because of righteousness that you came to church and went back and your father beat you he said blessed are you <laughs> that you refuse to collect bribe and they sack you blessed are you that you refuse to 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 sleep with a man and 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 he lied against you blessed are you we are living in a generation where, where holiness is very far from our mind a generation that has so much advertised fornication it has become normal to fornicate and abnormal not to fornicate so much that even in church there cannot be Christian courtship without fornication even in church because the world has advertised it so it becomes abnormal the standard of the world he said blessed are you 
that a man came to marry you and said, eh, I must live with you first. A man, if you buy to Navy test and you refuse and he left, he said, Blessed are you. If that man left because you stayed, I will not sleep with you before marriage. God said, You are blessed. Therefore, the world is not blessing, it's foolishness. That's how you do so. Leave me go. All money drum here, even pastor the drum. Even which pastor the drum, all man now. The voice of the stranger. The sheep will not obey. That's not the voice of the shepherd, it's the voice of the stranger. Worship me, and I will give you all these things. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what do I say, therefore? There should be no fear in your heart. There should be no fear in your heart. The Bible says it is even a blessing to die in Christ. Show me Revelation 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deed. We follow them. Follow them where? In heaven. Look up. It means whatever you do on earth, we follow you either in heaven or in the lake of fire in Philippians 1 verse 21 Apostle Paul said for me to live is Christ for me to die is gain the fear of death in the life of a Christian is a sign that is not conscious of heaven we are not afraid of death but we cannot go where Satan wants do you know why Satan wants to kill us because he knows if we are still in the flesh we can challenge him a dead a living dog is better than a dead lion Elijah cannot do what Kevin is doing now have you ever seen Elijah has he ever preached to you but I'm preaching now which means me in the flesh I have profit for the kingdom of God on earth that is why we can't die you can't die but the fear of death is a sign that you don't even know that death means release from this world and to be with the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? There is a reward for you. Stop crying. Finally, I end with this scripture. 1 John 5, 18 to 19. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps himself safe and the evil one cannot touch him. You see here? Eh? The evil one cannot. No, he can touch him. He cannot. <laughs> Satan cannot touch you. If, mm -mm, if you keep yourself for God. If, if, if. No matter how you pray and fast, if you are not holy, you will be a victim of satanic affliction. It is holiness that empowers you to escape every affliction of the devil. Because when there is sin in your heart, it gives the devil authority over your life. He said, he that is born of God does not continue to sin. Which means a child of God must constantly look at his life and check the things he must stop doing. Blessed be God. Is it anger in your heart? He said, don't continue. Is it bitterness? Is it unforgiveness? Is it hatred? Is it loss? Is it envy? Is it fornication? Is it lying? Is it bribery? He said, he that is born of God does not continue to sin. He does not. He may sin, but he does not continue. It may happen one time that you fornicate. He said, you, you stop. You do not continue. Continuing to sin is a sign that your fear of God is not present. Make a choice today. I must be holy for him not to have anything because I should be holy for you. I said when there is sin in your heart it gives the devil authority over your life. Glory be to the most high God. So be careful. But I wish to tell you this. But that there are wonderful promises of God for us that believe in him. He's a provider. Is a protector, is a banner, is a savior, is a shepherd. 
when we say our reward is in heaven does not mean we don't have access to things on earth it simply means our focus is not on the things on the earth but trust me child of God to those that serve the Lord he himself is their light on earth is their fire and their shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack that's not in heaven that's on earth but don't put your eye on that one yes he will give you marriage yes he will give you a child that is not your focus what is your focus heaven after it rise to your feet